up? Welcome to the Refined Strike podcast. I have a special guest with me today, Emily Interwitz. How are you doing, Emily? I'm good. How are you? Good. So Austin had the idea of having me introduce you as Emily Rawdog Interwitz. Oh my God, you should have. I would have died. Oh, and I almost did. I was like, no, I can't do it with a straight face. I will never not think of you guys whenever I hear that now. It is the grossest word ever. And so just... for the listeners, the, <laughs> at the Arnold, Austin was was with us. And we said something, we used the word, the term raw dogging, like raw dogging life or something like that. Um, we were talking about the supplements, whenever he made the yeah, little supplements bundle. <laughs> we about supplements, like raw dogging the workout, like without a pre-workout. Um, and... Emily was like, oh, don't use that word. I hate that word. It's so gross. <laughs> There's only a few words that just like set me off whenever I hear them. And that is probably one of them. And we were like, oh, okay, sorry. And then like after the Arnold was over, I think you said you heard it somewhere else and you immediately thought of us <laughs> and you texted us. And that was awesome. <laughs> I heard it on another podcast and I literally just like busted out laughing to myself. So now we're thought of as like the raw doggers. <laughs> I love it. So um, thank you for being on the podcast. Louis is like being extra needy right now. But um, so I wanted you to have, I wanted to have you on to just kind of like learn about you, especially learn about what you do with marketing and social media and stuff like that. Because I think, you know, a lot of people listening to it, a lot of them are, you know, clients, friends, um, bodybuilders, competitors, but also people that might be coaches or people who might want to be a coach someday, or just, you know, anyone who might want to be building a brand, you know, I'm sure we'll have a lot of core ambassadors listening to this or ambassadors of any brand. And that's how you and I know each other. I I don't know when we actually met. We, we were- Yeah, I don't know the first time you can't remember. It was something to do with probably you were coached by Paul and I saw you at a, you know, when you were in prep or something like that, and also knowing that we were together with CORE. So Emily and I have been CORE ambassadors and part of the CORE Nutritionals family for a long time. And um, and you took on a new role recently with CORE. And so you went from ambassador to sponsored athlete to marketing manager. Yeah. So tell me more about you personally as a person, who you are, and then tell me about what you do for CORE. Yeah. Uh, so it's been crazy that it's come all the way from being just an ambassador, but um, okay. obviously my name's Emily. Um, I live in Oklahoma. I um, do bikini competitions uh, currently in a very extended off season, uh, which is for the best. Um, but I previously, I used to work at a bank and I was the social media manager there. I was the communications coordinator. So I did all things marketing, um, social media, but for a bank. So as you can tell, that's probably not the most exciting thing in the world. Um, so while I was there, I this is before I did coaching or anything. So I also do online fitness coaching as well. But um, I started my own social media management business and I just kind of did it on a whim. I was like, I'm doing this for you know a corporation. And it was during COVID. So, you know, COVID was a huge, you know, negative thing for a lot of people, but it was also a blessing for me because it made people realize just how much social media is needed. You know, at that time, that was really the only way to market your business. Um, and then working at the bank, you know, I did uh, help with events and all those things. Those things were all pretty much stalled during COVID. You know, people weren't getting out. Um, I still worked, like my life never changed really. Like we always joke about it. I do that. I worked at a bank, which is, you know, an essential business. And then my husband is in the medical field. So, yeah. you know, our life went on as normal. Um, but we got kind of to a stagnant point with work at the, or work at, um, the bank and I was like, I can do this on my own. Like, you know, I, I should start this out. And so I just started putting it out there, started taking on a few clients. And then it turned to the point where I was able to quit my full-time job there and work from home for the first time. Nice. Um, so, yeah. So what was the turning point for you? I think this is something that a lot of people wonder and struggle with is like, when were you feeling, why did, what made you feel confident enough to quit the full-time corporate job with all the benefits and the salary and stuff like that into full-time just entrepreneur business owner soul everything yeah uh so full transparency i will say that i am very grateful and fortunate that i do have a husband 
and he is our source of insurance and he has a full-time job and he supports me through everything that I have ever done. And so he, you know, was a big encouragement for me to take that leap because it was a huge risk. And while I have those things available to me, I don't ever, you know, I never wanted to rely on those things. I never wanted that to be, you know, just my fallback plan, but it does, you know, make you feel better about having that safety cushion. Yeah. So it really was just kind of a leap of faith. I mean, I, you know, I was so unhappy in, sorry, now my cats are going crazy. Um, I was so unhappy working at the bank, you know, it turned into, a, it was a job that I really enjoyed. And then it became something that I really dreaded going in each day. And so yeah. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is affecting, you know, my mental health. This is affecting all aspects of my life. So it was like, if I have to try this and see if it works and if it doesn't, then it doesn't work out. And, you know, there's, there's something else I can go to, yeah. but it really was just a huge leap of faith. That's awesome. So then, so your work, you had a number of clients that you were doing like social media management for, could kind of describe that. Cause I feel like especially if you're online at all and you have your business, like if you're a business account online, you like, we all get those like spam messages of like, I can manage your social media and stuff like that. And there's so many people that are social media managers or social media gurus or whatever. So like, tell me about how you kind of like set yourself apart from that. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's crazy how prevalent that is. And that's something that I told myself I would never be because if somebody cold DM'd me and was like, you know, trying to sell me those services, I would automatically delete and block and be done with that. So I was like, yeah, never go about it that way. Um, so I was lucky that I had a good connection from a lot of people at the bank. I took on a lot of local clients. Um, I have worked with people, you know, nationwide as well, but I did take on a lot of local clients. And like I said, at that time, you know, social media was something that was, you know, prevalent before, but it was way more needed for businesses. Mm -hmm. And most people don't realize what goes into social media. People don't realize that that is a full-time job in itself. Like, and when I first started doing it, I almost felt kind of embarrassed to tell people like my full-time job is social media manager because there are so many like, people. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People are like, that's a joke of a job. Like that's not a real job. And I'm like, no, but it is like people can't do it on their own and their businesses see that effect from not having that because it is the easiest source of marketing. And it's, you know, a free source of marketing unless you hire somebody, but I believe you see that, you know, in return tenfold. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the things that I, that you'd say are the biggest reasons people need to hire a social media marketer? Like what are some of the things that people do wrong, I guess, as when you see businesses, like you have a new client and you're seeing them do their own marketing, marketing, (laughs) like what are they doing wrong most of the time? Uh, Most people just don't they don't understand what people want to see online. Like you have to make things look sexy. They have to look appealing. They have to look, you know, a certain way. And you have to present that to people on different platforms in different manners, like things that you post on Instagram, maybe aren't going to work for Twitter or Facebook, where there's a different way to go around doing that. Um, Things like doing ads and all that. It takes a lot more work than people think. Um, on the back end of things. So, you know, you're getting online and you're just seeing a picture and a caption and, you know, but it all correlates to different campaigns that are going on. Um, You know, there's, there's so much more scheduled to it than people think. And I think people just, they don't have the consistency. That's something that I see a lot is that people will just post, you know, once every two weeks or, you know, they post maybe five times in one week because they're super excited about something and then they just completely ghost and are gone. And it's people need to see that repetitive nature of things to remember your brand, to remember what you're selling, and then to eventually purchase whatever you're offering. So what is, what would you say is like the best way for someone to go about marketing themselves? Like if, if they're on social media in terms of like frequency and figuring out what frequency works, like what is advice you give to people as you're getting, as someone is getting started? Yeah. Um, I would tell somebody there's not a certain number of days that work for you. I think people put a lot of time and energy into saying you have to post every single day or you should post every other day 
or post at 10 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, they always come out with like the different like analytics on what the best time of day to post is. And I think that's, that has a little bit of truth to it because it is research that's out there, but you have to do what works best for you and what works best for your audience. And depending on what type of brand you are could mean, you know, what time of day you're posting, who your target audience is, when they are online. Um, and that's not going to be the same for company to company. You know, it's going to vary, very dependently. Um, you also really have to be authentic with things. And, you know, I think a lot of people feel they come at it and it's forced and you can tell that it's forced. And I don't know exactly, like it's hard to put into words exactly what it is that, you know, people are looking at something and thinking that it's forced, but you can tell, you can tell when somebody's genuinely using something or being authentic about their brand. And when somebody's just regurgitating something from AI, and that's mm. all whole different spiel that I can go down but yeah I it, but so go let's go into that spiel just like with AI AI is so popular now in so many different areas of all different industries what do you find is like the biggest mistake people are making with AI I think that it doesn't your business yeah that they are typing something into you know to ai getting an automated response which yes ai can do some really freaking awesome things but at the end of the day it's still an algorithm it's still a computer giving you an automated result and so you have to take what it gives you and then make it your own tweak some words you know i do it too i'm not going to say that i have never used it but I don't just use exactly what it spits out word for word. You still have to make it you at the end of the day. Like you are your brand, you are your own voice and you have to speak as you would, not as AI would for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think people think that AI is like the people that think of it as a good thing. Like, oh, this is going to help my business. This is going to help me, you know, automate so many things there. They kind of abuse it. A little bit and they they make it make everything for them um especially yeah. when it comes to like a caption you know you're if you want someone if you're if you have a longer caption you want it to be something that people want to read and that they actually feel is like authentic to you I honestly can't imagine like myself because I for me in my personal brand i I read a lot of long captions and I read like I read a lot of things and it's just like kind of feelings and thoughts out of my mind, um, into Instagram, but I cannot imagine putting out that long form type content with someone else's words, you know, yeah. why do you think people you utilize that and think that it will work? Because it's easy. Yeah. Because it's easy and it gives them something to go off of. And, you know, something at the end of the day, something's going to be better than nothing, but it's almost like whenever you have put something like that's so unauthentic. You can tell, like if you did that for your captions, I read your captions and, you know, I can hear your voice when I'm reading it. Yeah. But if you put something out AI, it's like, I can tell within two sentences that that's not you, you know? Yeah. So it's like, at the end of the day, like maybe, maybe that's not worth it. Maybe that's not better than doing nothing. Yeah. And I think people, like people are always searching for the easier or bigger, better thing, or like the, the thing that will systemize whatever you're doing. And I think like systems are great, but at the same time, say you get a customer from an AI generated caption, like you convert someone because of that post, that's that customer, I would say is probably not as high a quality of customer, right? Because they don't see who you really are. Like me as a coach, if all of my captions were AI generated, then the, then you know, they wouldn't have the nuances that I have, like in, in my own words. And so yeah. someone joining me as a coach because of something that AI said and not something that I said, then they're, they want to coach with the AI. <laughs> they don't want to really, they don't necessarily actually want to coach with me. And I think that's the problem. That's what makes it a lower quality customer or, um, or sale because that customer might not be happy with the real you if they were sold by AI. Yeah. And it can also come to bite you in the ass because it's like, if you put something out there mm -hmm. that AI like made sound really scientific and you know, all that, and then you don't know what you're talking about. And when somebody comes to you and asks you a question about that and you don't have an answer, like you're going to look stupid and better like, get your AI out. 
Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Answer the other question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think too, like, yeah, when you're, when the AI is kind of talking for you, you kind of, you automatically, it makes you not be as good at thinking, right? And not be as good at speaking or writing or anything, because if you have something else doing it for you, and doing all of the selling and the thinking and the writing and everything for you, like you're no longer going to get better at those things. I would say that like, since I've been on social media, I've gotten a lot better at writing and putting myself out there and getting a point across. And part of how I've gotten better at that is by doing it, but also doing it on the back end, like with my clients and checking in with them and stuff like that. And I think that's like the biggest thing that people just in any industry, but especially like ours with coaching, they don't quite see all of that back end work. They don't realize that it's not just about your marketing. Your results have to be your marketing too. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think, that, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think that we, in the coaching industry, especially, we already run into the problem of everybody putting out the same regurgitated content over and over and over again. Yeah. And I get it to an extent because it is health and fitness. There's only going to be so many topics and things that people go through when you're all are experiencing things, you know, probably similar with clients, but you have to find a way to put your own experience and spin on things. You can't just put the same thing out as somebody because somebody's just going to keep scrolling through that. So, be, so talk more about that. Like if someone is having trouble finding out, like, what do I post? Like, I want to grow my coaching business and I don't know what to post. How do they go about find, thinking about what to post when they don't have a lot of clients yet? They maybe have mostly lifestyle clients who don't want their pictures posted. They, you know, who, what type of content should that person try to do if they're not, if they shouldn't be copying someone else's content. Yeah. I, I mean, I run into this still to this day, sometimes personally, because I have a coaching business, but it's not the biggest coaching business. You know, I've only been in the game for a couple of years. And so I, that's, you know, very short amount of time in the grand scheme of things. And mm -hmm. so I run into that all the time and I have to lean on either my own personal experiences or the experiences that I do have with the few clients that I have. Um, I, of course, you know, see other people's posts. I follow a ton of other coaches. You know, the, the majority of my Instagram feed is things that have to do with health and fitness. So of course I'm going to get inspiration for those things and there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to find a way to relate it back to you or your clients or. Yeah. And put it in your own words. Credibility. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I said like, and put it in your own words. That's like the biggest thing is like. There, like you said, there's going to be subjects that everyone is talking about, like the importance of an off season, right? We're both going through that right now. We're in an off season. We tell our clients that all the time, but like, how do you put that message out there without just seeming like you're talking like everybody else? I think for me personally, like, obviously I also follow coaches. I'm going to hear what other coaches say and I'm going to, you know, like that or not like it, whatever. But when I sit down to write a caption, I, I can't look at anybody else's things. And sometimes I'll even find myself, like I'll see a, a coach, like a colleague of mine, like a friend who's a coach or whatever, and I'll read their caption and I'm like, damn, that's good. Like, that's really good. And like, why can't I write like that? And I'll kind of get down on myself and then I'll realize like, well, I do. I just, you know, I just wrote about that last week or I do have something to say about that that's different from what he or she said. So Sometimes what I'll do with that is like, I'll kind of think I'll read the caption and obviously like, I like it. I resonate with it. I know it would help people. Sometimes I'll share it myself, like share their work. I think that's always a really good way of just like showing support and showing that that kind of thing is important to talk about because then I'm sharing another coach's words as them. Like, Hey, go read this coach's words, go follow them, support them. Because in my mind, like we all have enough to eat. You shouldn't stray, stay away from supporting others, even in your own industry, in my opinion. But another thing that I do is like, I'll maybe like write a couple points down that I really liked that could be expanded more on in my own words. 
And then I'll go back to that note later on, like maybe a couple weeks later. And then, then it's fresh and I'm able to write my own words about it and just expand on it. And boom, then I have a caption. Yeah. I think that's great that you kind of sit on it for a little bit because that's, I think that's the worst thing you can do in the world is just to look at a post and be like, oh, this is great. And then immediately go write. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're not trying to, you just have those words in your head and they're going to come off, you know, very similar. Yeah. And I love what you said too, about sharing other people's content, because I have heard from a lot of people, surprisingly that, you know, people are out there telling people don't do that. Don't share other people's content. Like you need to be putting your own voice out there and only sharing what you have to say it doesn't degrade your own business at all again it's a support thing and you should be surrounded by people who are saying better things than you you should be putting out information from people who are smarter than you because it helps you in the long run yeah and I think it also gives what you're saying when you do put out content a little bit more credibility even because like hey guess what I'm not the only one saying this shit or yes. maybe repost someone's post about whatever it is you want to talk about and then add your own two cents to your own story. You know, like I, I did that today with, um, with a coach, Brittany, um, Holloman yeah, about, yeah. um, about just the fact that people are, you know, people want to be pushed until they see what they have to do to push. And yeah. like, she wrote an amazing, beautiful caption on that. And so like I posted that and then I like talked a little bit about my own experience just as an athlete. Cause I think like that's how we all learn and that's how we all grow by sharing others' experiences, sharing our experiences and just seeing, allowing other people to view that and allowing other people to get value from wherever they get it from, right? Because if I can share more stuff like that, not only my own stuff, I feel like that's just better for everybody. Because yeah. they get multiple ways of consuming that content. Yeah, for sure. And we all learn from each other. That's how we all become better at what we're doing. You know, none of us are just the most brightest, most brilliant coach from the get-go. You know, we yeah. have to learn from other people. And that shows that you're continuing to learn new things and be educated by others that are out there. Yeah, definitely. So tell me about your tell me about your work for core. Cause you, you still have your, your management business, like you're, you still coach and you're doing yeah. social media management for some private clients. And then you're now working for core nutritionals as well. So tell me about what you're doing over there. Yeah. So, and first of this year, I started as the marketing manager for core. Um, so I do all of the social media accounts. So I now hold, I think four social media accounts for them. Um, one will be coming in the next little bit. Can't talk on that one. Um, and then one is for core and then American labs. And then we have one for the boss status podcast as well. Yeah. So I do all the social media management there. And then I help with other various marketing things. Um, I do a lot of the emails, text messaging, um, just different marketing things like that. You know how it is. We all kind of, we all kind of help with everything around. Very there. Much happens. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, with so many different brands that you work for, not just Doug Miller brands, but other brands, your own brand, how do you just organize all of that and think, and also since you're writing all the captions for all of these brands, for the most part, right? Yeah. Um, how do you just like, how do you change the voice in each one? Go into yeah, like, how are you developing the brand voice? Yeah, that was something that I had to, especially when I first started my business, I had to completely learn how to do. It was very hard for me to not write things how I would write them and not speaking how I would speak for them. And Mm -hmm. that's just something that I think you have to, you have to learn about the companies. It takes a lot of back work. Um, In prior days, you know, I've worked with all kinds of different companies. I worked with a pasta company, a guy who made pasta locally. Um, I work with a home remodeling company. And, you know, those two companies speak totally different. And those two things, I really didn't know a lot about any of that, especially like the home remodeling stuff. I still have to go to, you know, the owner and I'm like, am I saying this correctly? Are these the right terms? Because I don't want to look like an idiot or make them look like an idiot because, Most people, you know, don't realize that this is even a job. And most people think that these are these companies writing, you know, what, what they're putting out there. And most of the time it's a third party, but you have to make it seem like it is them and make that not even be, you know, a question. So 
it just takes a lot of research, a lot of time, a lot of knowing, like truly knowing the companies with core, it was a little bit easier for me because I had such a backstory with them. You know, I had been an ambassador for, you know, how many ever years. And so I, I know how they speak on things. I, you know, I put time and effort into, you know, following the business for all these years. And, you know, that came easy to me. Um, we have one America Labs. That one is a challenge for me. Um, I have what Logan. A challenge? <laughs> I am so not the political redneck, um, typical type of, you know, audience that they're speaking to. And so I, you know, from the get go, I was like, I will help where I can with that one, but I am not the correct person for this. Um, so what's so the I best, what is the way that you feel like you've because you've, you've gotten a lot better at it, right? You've been doing it yeah. for a few months now. So how, how have you learned that voice? So again, doing a lot of like research on, I use the website. There's always descriptions on the website. I use a lot of that. I pull from that. Um, I have Logan who everybody calls the resident redneck that works at the company. So he is my kind of right-hand guy to go to on those things. And Logan Bailey, I, <laughs> look him yeah. up. He's Shout out Logan, tell me more than you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll come up with the, like the structure of, you know, what I'm wanting to post when I'm wanting to post it, you know, what products that we're going to be marketing. And then, you know, for a very specific wording, I will go to him or search things. Yeah. I actually recently do one for, um, we released a product about that was called first blood, which I did not even know that that was in relation or named after uh, the Rambo movie. And so I have no Rambo? idea. I've never seen it. Did you <laughs> watch all four Rambos of research? I've never seen it, but I knew what, I know what Rambo is, but I'd never heard of first blood Rambo. Oh, yeah. And I asked a question about it one day and Patrick literally sent me the, like a YouTube clip to the Rambo. And so I sat there and watched like a 15, minute clip from Rambo and I was like this is my life right now like what am I doing <laughs> wow that's great I'm surprised I'm disappointed you didn't watch like all of the Rambos oh like, no I didn't I didn't know. go that hard into it it's not quite my type of movie <laughs> yeah probably not um well cool so that kind of asks, makes me think too like how are you do you think are you scheduling out most of the content and if so like how far ahead do you schedule content uh, yes, I am very much a scheduled out person. I am a little bit OCD with things. I have spreadsheets on spreadsheets on spreadsheets. Uh, Google Sheets is my best friend. I keep everything housed in that and that, you know, helps me stay, you know, on track. But then I can also share that with various people, you know, throughout the company. Mm -hmm. um, I try my best to plan things out like at a, a month time uh, or a month in advance. I have a good outline of like kind of how I do things like there's a structure to the week you know with especially with core like we have constant deals of the week going up so I know that that's going to be you know a Monday post and then I know I'm going to reshare something about it to reiterate that on a Wednesday and then so it kind of follows a schedule week to week but we also have a lot going on like that is a business that has so many different things going on new products new flavors a lot of things happening last minute and so I've learned to try to be a little bit more flexible with that and so I have kind of like my backup plan and then that usually ends up getting to like having to change which is okay you know but I try I would love to be able to plan things out like a month in advance and I think that that's important no matter what kind of business that you're doing don't just you know plan it try to plan you know off the cuff on things you need to have some kind of structure on things yeah I I definitely agree I think when you're just one person like for myself example as an example I would say like I'm relatively good at planning things I used to be a lot more um I guess I would I would say like prideful of like being really good at planning things and then I kind of like I've relaxed a lot over the years since I left my corporate job of where I was like planning events and assisting a lot of people I was like an executive assistant for a huge property management company. And so like, I had to be like that and really on top of shit and type A and very organized. And, and I've like, since then, since I haven't been needing to have that level of organization, I've kind of let it go a little bit, but like I do some of my posts kind of off the cuff, just like, Oh, I feel like posting this today. Like my post, I just posted today, but then a lot of stuff I kind of 
and working on the week before. So do you feel like it's detrimental to someone who's like just running their own business? Say it's a coaching business or a small clothing brand or something like just a small business. Do you feel like they absolutely need to plan ahead or like what is what is the rule on that? Would you say? I don't think that there's any rule on that. I think it again, it totally depends on the type of business and you as an individual, you know, you are running that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a good idea to have maybe some things in your back pocket, like some, you know, we all have those days where you wake up and you're just like, or even weeks, you know, at a time where you're just like at like a writer's block and you can't mm -hmm. come up with anything to save your life, like have some things, you know, in your back pocket so that you can continue that consistency. So you don't just drop off the map, you know, for a week and, and come back. Um, if you're working with like a larger business, I do think it's, that's when it becomes a little bit more important to, to have those things, you know, completely planned out, but you as an individual, an, an individual, I cannot speak. Um, yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think that, you know, you, and sometimes it might be better to do that too, because that maybe whenever you have more of that real emotion that, you know, you might think of something, something might happen that day with the client and you're like, I have to post about this now. That's never going to be a detriment to your business. Yeah. What do you, what's your take on running ads? How do people get into running ads, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, um, tell us about ads. Yeah. Ads are like a, it's own little world. Um, it's not really as difficult as most people probably make it out to be, uh, the process of actually doing it. You can do it on Facebook and Instagram or, you know, one now. And so you can get on your Facebook. It can walk you through the entire thing. There's actually people from Facebook who can help you mm -hmm. if you, you know, need that and you're not familiar with all that. But I do think that it can be really good if you have, especially a smaller, more personal brand mm -hmm. uh, to put those ads out there. Um, you have to be very careful with the things that you post. Um, I tried to post one for my coaching business for the first time and I had progress pictures of my clients and I got flagged and it was taken down because it said that I was like inappropriately posting people's bodies without their consent or something like that. Something ridiculous. Um, I don't know. So you have to be very careful with how you do that because there are a lot more rules when it comes to that stuff, but it is cool. You can, you know, you can literally target a very specific area. So say you only want to coach local clients, you can target it down to, you put a zip code in there and, you know, narrow it down to people within 15, 20 miles from that radius. And so it targets those types of people. Um, you could target different age groups. Um, there's all kinds of different categories that you can narrow down that. So again, it's going to depend on the type of business that you have, but you could see some really great results from that, um, especially if you are wanting to target people in a certain area around you. And what about like ad strategy? Like what kinds of things to put into your ads and how that differs from like other posts? What would you say what differs from other posts? Yeah. I don't think it really necessarily has to differ. Um, I mean, of course you want to put a different type of content. You're not going to want to put, you know, an image maybe that you've already posted before just to have something new and relevant because it is going to show up in people's feed like it is any other post, you know, they're going to be scrolling through and it's going to come up. Um, but you know, if you're selling your services, then, you know, obviously with coaching, you might not want to do progress pictures. We all learned that. Um, but you know, you can post something that maybe has some wording on it. You know, a typical post may not have, um, like the infographic style. You could do something like that. Um, something that has multiple different images. You know, I just ran one recently for like a home remodeling company and it had multiple projects of theirs. And then it also had, um, their faces. People like to see people's faces. So as often as you can have somebody's face in something or your own face in something, I think that that benefits you more. So that's a great segue into just like how, how to sell your brand and also going back to the authenticity thing. Why are faces better? Because people people want to see the face behind the brand. They want to they want to look at people. They don't want to just look at objects all the time. You know, people, um, especially something like 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 with core. Like I try as often as I can to post faces because people can relate to that more. 
people will see maybe, you know, a tub of pre-workout and it's like, that's cool sometimes, but also they've probably seen that multiple times. They know what it looks like. There's nothing exciting. There's nothing that's going to stop them. But if they're scrolling through and they see you, like you, you're one of our athletes, you know, I post pictures of you sometimes they're, they see you and they're like, oh, that's Rachel. I'm going to stop and I'm going to read this and see what this is actually about. So it's, it's just more relatable. So talk about that in, for someone like say someone with an ambassador code, who's trying to build up their code sales and they're trying to market themselves just as an athlete and market their code. What are some of the things that you see as like mistakes people make with that? Uh, I think that again, just not showing yourself, like people are so afraid to be behind the camera. And I know that sometimes it can be a little bit unnerving in the beginning, but you will get used to it the more that you do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, post yourself, even if it's, you know, it seems cheesy sometimes, but if you're holding up your product, that picture with you and your product is going to be better than just that product by itself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And then start to incorporate you actually using it, you know, like, of course, it's going to be a stage photo because you're setting up the scene in your kitchen, but, you know, maybe a photo of you cooking something that you're using with that, you know, that protein powder or you in the gym drinking, you know, your pre-workout, mm-hmm. find ways that you're actually using it and find ways to capture that and show that off to people. Because again, people, it's, it's more authentic. People will connect to that more than just seeing a random picture of a tub. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, one thing that people get held back on, especially if they have like a little bit of momentum, like maybe they're kind of like a micro influencer, they have 10,000 followers or something like that. And they want to keep building from there and they want to earn money from their code sales or whatever, or they want to build their personal brand more, build their coaching business, whatever. And they just can't seem to get to that level. I think a lot of those people, like myself included, has thought this, that like, too much of something that feels like sales or marketing feels cringy. So how do you respond to that as someone giving advice to those people with that opinion? I think as long as it's something that you are genuinely using, and this is why I say, you know, show products of you using it multiple different ways, multiple different times. Um, you know, don't, don't lead with your code. Don't be like, you know, here, here's my code. Like that's, that's all this post is about. It's just showing you my code, but share information about it, share how you are using it, share what benefits that you've seen from it, from a personal standpoint, not just the ways that it is marketed to supposedly help, you know, everybody in general. Yeah. I think the, the cringiness factor is like controversial for a lot of people. Cause like, yeah, that thing that someone did with their product or their picture or their post was cringy and like very salesy or marketing, but like if it's working, it's working. So you don't have to copy exactly what that influencer does that has a million followers or got a million views, but you look at what the real content of it is and look at how they're getting the views. It's not just them being hot with the product, even though that's what it looks like, it's them doing something engaging. It's them doing something funny or doing, or like sharing a controversial opinion or, you know, doing something cool, like a backflip or something like that. Like they're doing something engaging and they're incorporating the product with it. So I think that's what holds a lot of people back is like, they just look at the thing all like at face value as cringy and like, I can't do that. I would never do that. But they're not realizing like you could do it on your own. Like think about all the gifts that you have. Like you're a competitor. You have plenty of great photos. You have the ability to take a great photo with your phone or a video or something like that. And yeah. it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be seen as cringy from to you. But at the same time, it's cringy because you know it part part of the reason why it's cringy to you is because I think you know that it works and you know that that person is benefiting from the engagement. And yeah. that's that's not a reason to, that you should hold yourself back. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And also don't make it so complicated. It doesn't always have to be professional photos. We don't all have access to a professional photographer, but most of us have an iPhone that probably has a camera that's better than 
a lot of other things out there. And so you have that ability. You just have to put effort into it. It doesn't come easy to those people who you may look at and think that it's cringy. They put a lot of effort and time into that. And so yeah. you have to do that too if you want to reap those benefits. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's like the, the athlete, Sam Slick is a great example of like, and I think a lot of people are talking about this nowadays, is like a great example of the fact that you don't need to have really high quality, super aesthetic backgrounds and everything. You don't need to think through that many things. You don't even need to be good at what you're doing. Like <laughs> you can just fucking do it and yeah. post it. And as long as you're being authentic and you're doing something engaging, whether it's training, talking about training, sharing your opinions, whatever it is, you're gonna get some views. And mm -hmm. it might not happen overnight, but like, it has to be about more than just the views it has to yeah. be about what am I providing? What am yeah. I sharing? Why am I sharing it? Yeah. Sam is a great example of that because he's just out there living his life. Like he's just doing exactly what he wants to do and he shares it and look at him now. Like yeah, he has exactly. blown up and his page is nothing special. Nothing. And he's one of like the most popular influencers in the industry and he hasn't even competed yeah <laughs> that's wild it's very wild <laughs> but yeah um so what would you say is like the best three pieces of advice for someone trying to build their brand from the ground up um best three pieces of advice i would say be you just be authentic, be whoever you are, because especially like in the coaching space, there's so many coaches out there, but there are so many humans out there who need coaching. And someone who's going to relate to you is not going to relate to me and the opposite. There is enough for everybody out there. So you don't have to come at it from a competitive standpoint and more so use the resources around you to better yourself, but present yourself in an authentic manner. Yeah. Um, I would say when you're starting off, like maybe this is when you do lean into scheduling, being a little bit more on point with those things, creating um, like an expectancy. Like you want people to expect to see a post from you, you know, every Monday or every Monday and every Wednesday, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be on those specific days, but the more that they can see you, the more that they can see you consistently, the more they're going to remember who you are. Mm -hmm. um, third piece. This is difficult. Uh, lean into quality content, I would say. Again, like how we talked about, we all have I mean, iPhones, you all have the capability. You know, it, again, it may take some more effort. Get a tripod, use your back camera, um, use things that you have around you to to make the scene be more aesthetic but don't share a picture of your dog whenever you're talking about something that you know has something to do with fitness or you know share those as well share your life but make your content something that people are going to want to stop and then read because people aren't going to read the caption if they're not interested in what the picture is telling you yeah yeah I think that's all really good I think too like just going off of that the um the quality content thing i think a lot of people get overwhelmed by like well i don't know how to do that so how do people learn how to create better quality content in i will say if you're starting off with nothing get on youtube youtube mm -hmm. is your best friend because you can literally probably search how to take a quality selfie or how to take a quality photo on your own and you'll get a whole string of videos to watch yeah um, but sure. you know, from there, get, like I said, get things like a tripod, get things like a ring light, you know, these things aren't that going to be that expensive. You can get them all pretty much on Amazon and they can really be game changers for how your content is produced. Yeah, for sure. I think, especially when it comes to like, if you're, if you're filming something in the gym, like a small tripod makes a big difference. Yes. And if you have a tripod, you're much more easily able to like make sure that you're not in anybody's way. Like I will only film something at the gym if I, there's not many or any people right behind me um, in the frame. 
And if they are, I'll try to use cinematic mode. So it like blurs them out. Um, and I'll usually, I'll only film if I have a tripod with me, which I usually have just in my gym bag. And it's like a really, I'll link the one in my show notes, but it's like, it's super compact. It's like this long, it's like a foot long. And it's just like super compact. And it's like, you just put it, bring it out <laughs> and yeah. it's uh, super easy, but like that. And then yeah, a ring light and even something like when you're at home, say, if you want to start sharing more recipes, like recipes look a lot better with light and also just like a clear, clean space. And I think just a clean space, your kitchen doesn't have to be new and aesthetic, can go a long way with that and not being overly shadowy or dark or anything like that. Yeah. And it's really funny that we're talking about this right now because you'll notice that my light just went out. <laughs> and this little guy that I have just died. So, but this um, is a little clip that you put on your phone. I put it up here whenever I'm on like Zoom calls and things, but I think awesome. it was like, in bucks, but I'm like, what better time for that to die? So sorry, it's gonna be dark for a minute. <laughs> that's okay. We'll link that one in the show notes as well because I there think that's a really cool tool, especially yeah. if you do a lot of content like at your desk. Yeah. One thing that I've started doing when, um, or I've done a lot over the course of my coaching career, but like I've started to lean into doing it a little bit more lately, is if I go through a client check in and I think about something that I said to the client, I'm like, ooh, that's gold. I should share that with more people um, because it would resonate with more people. Most things like that do. Um, I will quick set my phone up with my little like ring light, happy light that I have on my desk right behind it. And I'll just film something really quick, me talking about the subject. And then boom, that's a reel. And I think that goes back to like your tip on not overthinking things. If something is like in your mind a lot or in your client's minds, or if it's like a common problem for your customers, that's a really good thing to sh like solve for your customers or your clients with social media. Because yeah. think about why people sign up with you. A lot of the time they sign up with you because they see your content and they see what you're putting out there. They see your you know, what you're doing, what you're selling on social media. So any content that you put out, yeah, you can share things about yourself. You can share a tip or a trick or whatever recipe, but sharing things that are act, that act as solutions to common problems, I think is a really good marketing technique when you don't have as much of like the progress pictures to share, or if you're just kind of stuck on what to post and you don't feel creative, just literally film yourself talking about something or share a reel of any kind of video that you have and write it in the caption. I think that's getting, that's been pretty popular lately is sharing like a long form caption with like a really short reel. I know that the algorithm likes different things all the time, but I know that that's been kind of a thing for a while that has helped my own engagement when I want to write long form content. Yeah. And that's great too, that you're like stopping and doing those things in the moment. Because A, you know, you're not having to think about it later, but that stuff's fresh on your mind. That's when it's the most authentic to you and mm -hmm. you know exactly what you're talking about. And it takes, you know, just a few minutes of your time to get that and you, the, the payback on that is going to be, you know, tenfold. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So now you might have to think on this. What is an unpopular opinion that you have about how people market themselves and what people are doing on social media? An unpopular opinion. You can be mean. It's okay. <laughs> um, that's hard. What do, what do you mean, like, by unpopular? So, opinion? like, unpopular opinion, like, controversial opinion, something that, like, or something that you see people do a lot that you just want them to stop doing because it's not <laughs> for them. Um, I'll say that I, I don't see it quite as often anymore, but the, like, dancing, pointing at words on the screen, uh, reels, like, that, that was a very hard time in life for me. I would never have done that. I no. hated seeing that. Everybody. I've never done that either. <laughs> Oh God, that's the absolute worst thing that you could do. Like, just don't like, yes, there's always going to be those videos that kind of go viral or like the challenges that people do. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that, but 
I think in terms of like marketing your business, like when you're doing something like that, people know that you're just being kind of funny if it's like one of those challenges or something. But if you're genuinely trying to market your business by doing the same reel, copying the same reel that's on there over and over and over again, just don't try. Just, just do that. I just did. stop and go just for a stop. while. And think about something just else. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I think one of mine is, um, a definitely when people just like regurgitate hate someone's content where I like I will literally like see someone's content and it'll be almost word for word what someone else I follow has just posted yeah. or written or something like that and I see people doing that quite a bit um so I think that would be and then what you said too also for me it's spelling errors like oh god please this is your <laughs> fucking business like you That's... need to spell check some shit that is a, that is a really good one. Yes, I actually have friends like y'all know who you are. Where I will like <laughs> if they post something that has a spelling error, I will send it to them and be like, "Hey, you spell this wrong." Yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'll put my own husband on the spot. Like he's not marketing his business or anything, but like I love him more than life itself. But he's the worst speller in the world, and so yeah. all the time I'm like, "No, correct this. Like you cannot put this out into the world and it not be spelled right or not have right grammar." Yeah. Because it's just that it's not that someone really cares that much that you spelled something wrong. It's that it takes down your level of professionalism. It takes down your just quality level and kind of like puts you, puts a, just a dim light on you because you didn't think it was important enough to spell check your own work that you put out there trying to get people to engage with you, trying to get people to um connect with you or buy something from you it just like you know look at most successful marketing ads out there like they don't have spelling errors they don't use poor grammar like it's there because they're not amateurs and yeah so that's that's a big pet peeve of mine yeah i thought it was something else go ahead oh no you go i was gonna say i thought of something else but relates to marketing but it's also a huge just pet peeve of mine in general like please do not fall for business coaches who are going to charge you ten thousand dollars a month to give you marketing like there are all kinds of different mentorships and things like that where you're learning things and all that that's great but please do your research on something like that because 99 percent of the business coaches out there are telling you how to sell in the dms or to regurgitate the same content and i think that that's where a lot of that regurgitated regurgitated content comes from is that there's somebody else out there profiting off of people telling them what to do and it doesn't work you can do those things on your own for free yeah absolutely and that's the thing i think that's a really great thing to talk about and it's what i know people like close to me who have like almost gone that route of like, cause they're just, they're in a mode of like almost desperation, right? Because like, I really need to make money in my business. And I'm really afraid that I'm doing everything wrong. And I I need this business coach to help me get there. And there's, I don't want to say that there's something like inherently wrong with someone to teach you things like marketing or sales or, you know, systems. I think a lot of business coaches out there are doing things that are good in some ways but they're also praying they're 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 teaching you to pray on people and I just I don't like that and it doesn't people do see through that and again you're you have to think about like what type of customer do you want I want a customer I want a client who wants to work with me who's going to seek me out so instead of cold dming or dming everyone that comments on my post or everyone that follows me or whatever the the rules are that they tell people to do like I'm just gonna put out more content showing who I am who my clients are how I work and things like that and if they want to work with me because of that great and at the end of the day like that's a lot of money to spend on someone when you don't have much money or any and so you have to think about like what I had a friend who was asking me advice on like should I hire a business coach for, for my business. And I told her, honestly, like you could try it. If you think that it's worth it, go for it. But at the end of the day, I would say before you decide to do that, sit down and write down 10 things 
that you could do right now that you're not doing that could help you make your business better. And, you know, things like automatic payments. If you're kind of a side hustle coach and you're not doing a high volume of clients, a lot of people like that just charge their clients Venmo every month and they do it manually and they have to set reminders and it's a lot of work. So what if you made it an automatic payment and had them sign up for it, then they're not thinking about it every time you set, you ask them for payment. And that's not like a sleazy business move. That's a normal yeah. thing for coaches is to have automatic payments. It's nice for the coach because it takes work off of you, but it's also nice for the client because they don't have to think about it every month and they don't have to get reminded every month to do it. And so it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like that's one thing that you could do that instantly saves you time and stress. And typically it makes people cancel less often. And it also allows your income to be more um, stable, right? And, you know, so like little things like that or like creating a more seamless flow when you sign people up and creating a better like getting started booklet for frequently asked questions when someone signs up with you for coaching. So like, I'd always ask yourself more questions in my mind. Like that's the better way of going about things when you want to level up your business. Instead of hiring a business coach for $10,000, think about what you're doing right now that you can easily change by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Exhaust all of your other options before you go that route. Like you said, they're not all bad. There's not all sleazy people out there who are just trying to get your money. Yeah. But there is a lot. And so you have to do your own, it's your own personal responsibility to make sure that you have everything in line first before you go to those things. Yeah. And my opinion too is like, especially as a coach, but whatever industry you're in where there's business coaches is like, what would make you a better coach? What would make you better for your actual clients, like your current clients? Because everyone's, everyone on the business coaching side, they're trying to get you to get more clients and get you more efficient at your current job. But it's not, there's less emphasis, it seems, on the actual quality of your current client work. And I think yeah. that's the biggest thing that desperation makes us forget is you got to take care of your current people. Because if your yeah. current people aren't taken care of as much as well, and you're so focused on your new people or some other things that you're doing, they're going to notice and they're going to leave. And there goes, there goes your client base. And then you have to keep going in that, spinning that wheel of finding new clients because people keep leaving. Well, yeah. if you focus more on your current clients and your, what you're currently doing, you'd be a lot better off because then you have better client retention. You have more time to spend with that client making better progress because you have them for longer versus always starting with new people all the time be, and having them quit after a few months because they're not getting taken care of and the vicious cycle goes on you really never get any content to market with with your current clients yeah. yeah well and one of the best forms of marketing that you can have is referrals mm -hmm. word of mouth from your clients who are happy you will get more referrals from that than you probably will by any post you make on the internet so Absolutely. invest that time into making sure that those people are taken care of and those people are happy yeah. And stop worrying about, you know, having a multitude of clients, but have a few that really, you know, enjoy and have good progress with you. Yeah. Quality matters way more than quantity in yeah. almost everything. <laughs> and yeah. I think too, like going back to marketing and like actual social media and your posting and stuff like that, like that can be a source of referrals, right? Like if someone likes your content and they share it, and someone else sees that and they don't follow you, then that's kind of like a referral. And so yeah. they see that thing. So if you post more things that are valuable to the general public or to your niche customer, then you're going to get more people sharing that. And when people share that, other people see it or it pops up on the explore page. Like I've had a, a number of inquiries come in because they just found me on Instagram on their explore page. Yeah. And like, I don't even have that many followers, I think, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I could have more, but yeah, I think that's something that people don't see enough of is like just adding value out there so people can help you. So people can see you more. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, with the followers, having a ton of followers, yeah, it's helpful in some instances, but it is not everything, yeah. you know, if you have 20,000 followers who are all you know, old creepy guys who have followed you or like bot accounts, 
that's not going to help your business at all. So you yeah. don't put such an emphasis into those things. Yeah, exactly. Well, any last words of wisdom for people trying to marketing their business? Just keep going, keep doing it. You know, I know how easy it is to get overwhelmed with things and to feel like you're not making any progress. And, you know, especially in coaching, feeling like that nobody's going to come to you because you don't have that, you know, that background of all these clients progress photos to show, but keep going, keep doing it, keep putting yourself out there, keep making relevant content and finding solutions to people's problems and also, you know, solutions to things that maybe you have gone through yourself, because again, it's that authenticity piece that people are going to connect to the most. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah. I'm super excited to share your wisdom. And if anybody wants to work with Emily, she is on Instagram. I will have her information down in the show notes on wherever you're listening. Um, but tell them where to find you and for all the things. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's Emily Lauren underscore D, which I know is a little confusing because that's my maiden name, but I don't want to change it. So uh, find me on there or you can find me on Facebook at Emily Interwitz. But those are my two, two main contacts. Nice. And use code yeah. Emily if you want to get 20% off on Pro Nutritionals. Emily D. Emily D. Yes, oh, Emily D. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Is there another Emily? Do we have another Emily? Is there just an Emily? I'll have to check and see if we can give you an Emily. Out. <laughs> I hope not. Let's never get just an Emily because I don't want people to think that it's no. <laughs> Code Emily D. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. Like and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening and write us a review if you can. I would love that. Bye.